September 4th, 1930. Time of the Great Depression, after the stock market crash of 1929. Everyone in America in a desperate struggle for survival. A baby girl was born that day in Brooklyn, New York. You probably don't know her name, and you probably don't know her story. But this brilliant only child, Renee Rubin, would significantly change the course of history for women. Renee was always fascinated by the courageous and independent spirit of pioneer Amelia Earhart. Renee dreamed of being a pilot one day too, and showed a keen interest in academic subjects that only boys pursued at the time. Renee excelled in school as a little girl. She had a passion and a talent for learning. She was often reprimanded for making the boys look bad. When teachers directed questions at the boys, Renee would raise her hand. Schools taught only home education to girls to prepare them to be wives and mothers. And those were society's rules, but not Renee's. Renee was not only at the top of her class, but she sped through the coursework in half the time it took the rest of any class. In 1945, at the age of 15, Renee Rubin graduated from high school. It was a post-World War II. Women who considered college looked at it as a good place to find a husband. Women were expected and encouraged then to be housewives. The ratio of men to women going to college was 9 to 1, and only 1.2% of all women even considered taking college courses. And most ladies who did eventually dropped out anyway once they found Mr. Wright. It was unfathomable for a young woman to declare a man's major in college, but that's exactly what Renee Rubin did. At 15, she started her college career. And four years later, Renee graduated at 19 years old. It was 1950. Miss Rubin was the first female ever to graduate from the University of California at Berkeley with a Master of Arts degree in technical criminology, unheard of at the time. That field of study had only produced exclusively male graduates. Despite denials, refusals, and disapproving scholars, Renee decided that her mission was to show what women can and should do, and that was everything that a man can do. Who does she think she is? Doesn't Miss Rubin know the rules? Throughout the 1950s, Renee recalls teachers, professors, and adults all in general tried to steer her into traditionally female occupations, home economics, cooking, teaching, to which she questioned why the boys weren't doing it. Renee was unpopular. She pushed back, and such behavior was considered impolite from a woman. Being told no or getting reprimanded seemed to fuel Renee's drive even more to pursue and push what she loved, especially because her choices were off limits. She had plenty of boyfriends and suitors, but there wasn't time for that. She wasn't interested in doing the same things other women were doing. She needed to prove women were more. Her father, Dr. Herman Rubin, taught her early on that education was the only thing that no one could ever take from you. She stood at six feet tall, this fiery redhead, but she was overlooked and she was underestimated. She took the academic world by storm. She then went to UC San Francisco Forensic Medicine School in technical justice at UC Los Angeles. She studied military science. She learned all she could. She studied disciplines where she was the only female in the auditorium. In 1952, Renee Rubin decided it was time to fulfill her childhood dream. She went to American University in Washington, D.C. to study air transportation. The very next year, 1953, she earned her single engine pilot's license. Amelia Earhart would be proud. Renee was beautiful, but none so lucky would ever win her hand. She knew that marriage could only further confine her to a predetermined life in service to a man, and her destiny was to bust wide open opportunities she was passionate about and show the world that women like her were a force to be reckoned with. She decided she could do both things she loved and combined her love of flying with a zealous pursuit of criminal justice education. It was in another male-dominated bastion that was forbidden to women. She chose U.S. Air Force military police.
The core values of the Air Force were also Renee's. Integrity, service, excellence. Intelligence, skill, and pride were not reserved just for men. Renee was determined. There's more to life, she said, than being a passenger. She would pilot her own future and let no man stand in her way. Oh!